So we start, okay. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about our, our panelists. We have uh, Mr. Uh, Matt James from MBDS Next. They're the, the leading IT providers for global tourism and travel industry. We have Chin Lim, you know, he uh, used to be a startups and then right now he's the lead strategist of Autodesk, which is the, the company who builds software that help people imagine, design and create, create a better world. Yes, uh, Bob Lewis is quite familiar with, familiar with all of us. He's come on the way to Vietnam and he's the, the very first person to set up the co-working space. And then right now he's working in EdTech to help the people getting better. Tung uh, An the the guy who starts so many businesses. And right now he's the chairman of Grab Vietnam, which is Grab is the Southeast Asia leading rice hailing and mobile payments platform. Grab stone critical transportation challenges to make transport freedom and reality for 620 million people. Wow, huge number. So can we start with a very simple question? How do you think about the topic Danang Innovation Hub by the Sea? Can we start with Mr. Chimlin? I think it's very exciting to be part of a Where they believe they can change the world. To be able to engage and discuss ideas that can bring fruit to effect change and improve the community. What do you define innovation hub in your point of view? I think uh, the word uh, revolving around innovation sometimes get confused with creativity and sometimes get uh, confused with invention. Mm. So uh, to understand what innovation is, I think we sh should understand what those other words that we often use around it. That invention is building something that didn't exist. And if you're looking at creativity, it's about putting in your imagination into something that you want to build. And innovation is taking what is and making it that little bit better. Thank you. And Tung how do you think about Janang Innovation Hub by the Sea? Well, uh, no, uh, I think it's a great idea and I think it's very important that we are discussing about it today because that will bring the, the conversation to many people and uh, many people will think about it and will try to add values to make it better over time. So what I'm saying is that um, I hope that Danang can also help the startups. I think the, dip, the, difference, uh, the difference is that Da Nang can help in terms of uh, paperwork, in terms of dealing with government policy regulations. Uh, if they can really work with startup to pave the way for them to develop it, then that would be really great. Uh, because in other cities, I think uh, there's a lot of startup movement as well. They want to do it, but for some of them, some of the industry, uh, it's just much harder because there's nobody to guide them. Okay. So, so, yeah, I think it's good that we have a conversations here so everyone's aware and then everyone keeps thinking on how to do it better. Thank you. So, James, how do you think about that? Hello. You're working. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, Da Nang is very well positioned. It's uh, at the end of the east-west economic corridor. You're, you've been identified as being a smart city for Vietnam. A population of one million, you've got six million visitors, 30% um, of them foreign. So I think the, you have the right, the right chemistry, the right sort of ingredients for Da Nang to be positioned as a, a, as a hub for innovation. I think Jeff touched on it, you, you need to, to build the ecosystem which you're, which you're doing to really encourage and to, to grow the, uh, the ideas coming from the entrepreneurs. Um, and this is the second event, uh, I wasn't here last year, but just seeing the number of people, uh, seeing the energy and the vibrancy, it's, uh, it's really encouraging. And so Bobby, Innovation Hub by the Sea, what it mean to you? Okay, um, last year in Jeju, I was invited by the uh, Jeju Creative, uh, well, that's a um, creative, startup creative organization that was, I think, uh, partly supported by uh, Kakao and the Korean government, uh, Jeju government. And one of the conversations that I've had with them, um, I coined the phrase, second city, 
alliance. And in thinking that, uh, it was because uh, first there was an event in Malaysia, in Penang, and I relate that to Da Nang, which, uh, which is unique because in, in the Southeast Asia startup ecosystem, for example, I think only Vietnam has a th three big city um, where, where the three big cities are it eagerly pursuing, you know, this uh, building this startup ecosystem. So, and, and, and I see Da Nang with all these other uh, second cities have something in common, that there are certain niches that can be focused upon, right? Uh, for one, tourism, right? If you look at places like uh, Cebu, uh, Penang, Da Nang included, uh, and then you have Chiang Mai maybe in, in Thailand, Right? So they are, they are very focused into certain areas and these areas are very heavily supported you know, by the community as well. So if you put them together, I think you create this great alliance. You know, and, and, well, I call it Second City not because of size, but just, you know, uh, just as, as a phrase. Um, da Nang as an innovation hub, sure, you know, it's, it's always possible. Right? I mean, your, your government here is you know, absolutely fantastic in, in promoting um, businesses here for a start. Um, and, and it's a great environment to be. Actually, it's one of my wishes to actually move to Da Nang to live, you know. So, uh, yeah, but we cannot look at it and say that, all right, Da Nang is an innovation hub. It's probably one of the innovation hubs, you know, at least in Vietnam. But, you know, what kind of uniqueness that Da Nang can have so that it will put Da Nang on the map. So we can go with the uniqueness that Da Nang can have later. Uh, I want to come back with Dr. Chin Lin uh, on the term, but they, uh, Autodesk, you work in the Rao Vietnam, and so with uh, Mr. Tung from the Kinder World and Pegasus, so you choose Da Nang, uh, will be your first staff in Vietnam. Why is that? I think geographically, uh, Da Nang is easy to get to. It's in the middle. I, I come here and I can go to Hanoi and can go to Ho Chi Minh that much easier. So that's one. I think also um, Da Nang, geographical. It's got the river, it's got the sea, it's got the mountains. I think the beauty of it is great. Um, the third area I think also that's exciting is um, Da Nang is hungry. Da Nang has the talent and Perhaps the Danang people may not know it, but they can be the potential, as Jeff Hoffman has said. Um, just given the tools, right? Uh, with your ideas that you have, you can inspire the rest. And so this is where um, engaging, uh, first of all, uh, for me, uh, with the familiar people, uh, like uh, Ricky and his team, helped me understand that this is one place that can start and spark and ignite the community. Yeah. So, do, do you think that Pegasus and Autodesk, you can help Da Nang to achieve the goal innovation hub by the sea? How do you can do that? First, um, I'm not going to guess it, but I think and I believe it can be done. So first, I come with the belief it's possible. Uh, the second point being that uh, we need to find partners. And so Pegasus is just one uh, entity of the ecosystem that we are looking at, uh, working in conjunction with the government officials uh, in Da Nang, working with the public and private engagements, and also uh, just engaging with the energy of the people of Da Nang. I think we are very possible to find something very exciting and we can buy on sooner than later. Yeah, thank you. Uh, James, um, do you think I'm so crazy to compete Da Nang and Bangkok at the Innovation Hub? Do I think you're crazy? Yeah. Well, yes, I think you're crazy, but not for that. Uh, <laughs> um, I would say that in, in some aspects, you are already ahead of, uh, of Bangkok. Maybe not so on the, on the ecosystem, but in the, as, as what Chin just said, on that hunger part, um, some of the people in Bangkok are maybe not as hungry as what I've seen here, seen here in Vietnam. There's a real sense of entrepreneurship. Uh, the population of what, Vietnam is 90 million, 50% of the population is aged under 30. Um, educated, enthusiastic, with uh, a growing enthusiasm to adopt these great technologies, these new technologies. 
Um, I think you're very well positioned. As I said, you're, you're at the end of the east-west economic corridor that's, that's going to be developed. Um, I think you've already started to see elements of the smart city concept being adopted by, by Da Nang with the Internet of Things, with IBM that you're doing. Uh, and I think, I think very, very, very quickly, Da Nang could position itself in the region, not just within Vietnam, but within Southeast Asia, as a city to, to look up to when it comes to innovation. Uh, just adding on to what Bobby said about the, the, the second city sort, sort of concept, um, Fukuoka in Japan is positioning itself uh, as the startup city for Japan. They have uh, specific tax breaks, they encourage uh, foreign investment, they have special visas for people, um, and I could see maybe that being an element to add to, to, to Da Nang as well, to encourage the uh, external entrepreneurs coming in. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Tung An, to your left, Da Nang, why you keep calling? Uh, keep visiting Da Nang time by time. Do you want to move here to live with me? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of that. I mean, not move in with you, but uh, someone else. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I think uh, aside from uh, tax spread um, uh, and and other uh, support program, uh, like I say, it's very important to guide staff through a regulation process, and um, uh, especially if Da Nang can create some kind of sandbox for stop really to test our new ideas because sometimes new ideas um, it's just fast, it's just pop ups and, and you, ju you have to try it immediately so sometimes most of us start up actually they die before they're even two, two years old right so tax break doesn't really matter they just lose money a lot so I think we have to create a specific program and really listen to uh, what's the problems uh, with start up and how can we help them to move faster and implement new, new ideas implement new ideas mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think that would be really, really helpful. And uh, if you can do that, actually Da Nang can stand out as, as the one place that people can do things, good things, positive things, uh, that may be not so easy or when they do it in, in other cities. So when you do that, then they really have uh, the motivation to move here. I mean, here, if we're talking about being relaxed, I think it's fine, uh, but it's like taking a vacation. But then when after vacation, people come back to work, now here, I think people, we don't want people to forget about work, but to live in harmony between being relaxed and working at the same time. So I, I think that's the feeling that we want to convey uh, to, to our target audience. Right? So what is the, like, do, we, do you think that we have something we call unfair advantage between Da Nang, Hanoi and Saigon? Uh, 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 not unfair yet. I think it should be more unfair. I think it should try to be more unfair by creating sandbox, like I say, by giving something really special. And uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, models in the world that we can learn from. Uh, yeah, I think a few countries, they have that. And, and like in my discussion with you before, Phuket is also a very great uh, model to follow. Uh, startup is not necessarily mean technology, but it's also about travel, health, fitness. And, and other things. So maybe it's a good place to, to start. So we, we, we can open the fitness center together so we can get fit better like... Yeah, I, I think it starts with awareness. Yeah, if, if you want to talk about that, I think it starts with awareness and uh, how to make people more aware of their health and how, how can we do start up means that doing what you love and help people to realize the thing you just realized. So, so it's not just on the cool, uh, cool buzzwords on TV. It's not just about Facebook, Google. I think it's about really put yourself out there to help people with what you just realized. Mm, yeah. So Matt, do you think that the, the travel tourism startups is related to, to Tanang because we have a lot of tourism, tourists coming here? Um, yes, yeah, so you've what did I say, you have six million uh, tourists, 30% of them international tourists, 35% yes. international mm -hmm. tourists. You've got, now got uh, more and more direct flights opening to uh, Japan, China, Korea, and, and other parts of Southeast Asia. Um, I think really to, to drive the, the travel startup more, you need to build this ecosystem to support those ideas. Um, whether that's the media, the co-working spaces, whether it's uh, the entre entrepreneurial support. Um, 
that needs to be to be built out. Amadeus Next, we started that uh, about 18 months ago, specifically with the, the reason because we saw that uh, amongst the startup uh, verticals, there wasn't a specific vertical for travel and tourism technology. So we, we created this by bringing together other partners, and we recently partnered with, with DNES, uh, but we've partnered with uh, other government private bodies throughout Southeast Asia, other VCs and, and uh, media, event companies, uh, etc., to support these ideas. Um, and I think that would, that's what would be needed to, to, to really position Da Nang as the sort of a travel and tourism, uh, travel and tourism hub. Um, I like the idea of the, the, the sandbox and we're, we're speaking about doing similar things with other, uh, with other cities about creating sort of a data sandbox where startups and other private corporations can access uh, the data, well not just the data we have, we have massive amounts of data. We process one third of all air travelers globally. Um, we provide or we generate 40% of all travel agency bookings globally. So we have a lot of data and that could be very useful to both startups but also to public organizations, to government, to municipalities and cities. So creating the, uh, uh, like a sandbox type environment as part of the ecosystem would be very beneficial. Yeah, sounds interesting. So Bobby, do you think that we can be like digital hub to, um, to collect, uh, to attract the digital nomad around areas to come to the now? Because we have less talent here no, actually, I don't. Okay, I don't agree with you that Da Nang has less talent. All right, Game Love hires more than 600 developers. Uh, Agility Io, um, the founder is a friend of mine, uh, has his Vietnam operation only in Da Nang. And another company which I cannot reveal the name, they are also setting up their development base in Da Nang instead of Hanoi, right? Um, and and you know, so he he was asking me which city to go to. And I said, listen, you know, if you want to come here and work, I think, you know, Da Nang will be a fantastic place to be, you know. Um, and, and going back to what, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Jeff Hoffman said in his closing speech, you know, it's really not just about being an entrepreneur or, or trying to be an entrepreneur. It's really about changing the mindset of younger people to want to work for entrepreneurs. You know, you, you, not everyone can be a founder, that's fine, but you can always be the number two person, which is as important as the number one person, or the tenth person, which is as important as the number one person as well. And I think, you know, there's a lot of uh, talent to be had in the Nang. You know, it's just a matter of how you guys, you know, you are the ecosystem builder here to really show, you know, you know that, that uh, to bring in the phrase, you know, uh, that diamond in the rough. Right, uh, I, I'm sure you know that there are a lot of interest from all groups here, you know, everyone here, including me, to want to do something in Da Nang. How do you, you know, present that in, in a way whereby, you know, it gets easy access and that can be replicated, you know, across uh, different sectors uh, in Da Nang. How to bring you to Da Nang? Tell me, what do, uh, what do you need me to do to have you here? Well, I'm here now, right? <laughs> no, Topica also. Um, I think Topica is here too, right? Uh, of, and okay, from an education product standpoint, yes, you know, it's definitely very, very promising. Um, but I run mainly the startup, which is a Topica Founder Institute. And it's really, you know, on, on, on my plan, one of the to do's uh, to have a program in, in Da Nang. So, yeah. And, and so let's see how soon that. Will be. We are building a very big building so you can occupy uh, some space for you. We can sell some space for you by the beach so you can enjoy walking and chalking every day and then do business. Do you think this is the, something related to chalking at the beach and doing business is the smart city, right? Do you think so? Well, I think it's important. I think more and more people you know, want to have an environment whereby you know, it's not a nice environment but a more motivated, uh, ins uh, inspired environment to work. You, you want to you know, leave your house or your office outside and then to, to be refreshed with you know, a lot more creativity than 
you know, before you left, right? And, and I think Da Nang is one place where, you know, you, you, uh, it can potentially provide, you know, that kind of inspiration. Uh, I've lived in, the, you know, Hanoi many years. And yes, Hanoi is really in, in, inspirational. Okay, but I think Da Nang, you know, has that, as you said, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the unfair advantage. I think this is an unfair advantage where you come out and you go like, wow, you know, what cannot we do? You know, the, the, the kind of mentality and then, yeah, and I, I think that's something that it needs to be harnessed. So, Mr. Chim Lim, what do you think about Bobby's idea? I totally agree. Um, the environment which you live that allows you to get inspired will definitely get you closer to where you want to be. Uh, I'm looking for funding, interested. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that too. Um, I think also to get uh, Da Nang to take off, um, you cannot boil the ocean. I think we need to pick a couple of um, industries or a couple of uh, startups that you will back because the world wants to see success. And if there is one success or a couple of successes that come out of the Nang, definitely you get the world's notice. So I think uh, to be able to pick the right one and back that uh, startup, I think is very critical. I think another aspect of it is that um, inspiration, if you look at um, San Francisco, the 101 highway, the Silicon Valley, what makes them um, successful um, is I think, again, Da Nang is placed correctly, right? Um, you've got the beauty and then you are the crossroad between north and south. So it's a natural way to congregate and be able to then pick the best uh, that you want to invest with and bring them to Da Nang. Now, I don't think Da Nang is hard shape at all, right? I, you have the space, um, the beauty to get that inspiration. So it's a matter of putting together the PPP, right? The public uh, support from the government and getting the right investors and private um, companies that come here and dig in and commit with the government to make things happen uh, because you are all, we are on fertile ground. It's a matter of what we want to put a seed to grow it. So Tongan, you travel all around the, the world to do business. So how you define that Bobby and Mr. Jin have set in terms of Danang opportunity to have you here? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, what's, what's the question again? You said that both of them travel. Uh, yeah, they said that, okay, then I should do something to get them uh, and all the talent to do entrepreneurs in Danang. So how do you think about that? Yeah, of course, we, we, we should do that. The question is how, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's what the, is the, the list that you really need? Well, I, uh, there, there's no simple checklist right here. Um, so I guess the, the move has to be uh, quite organic and then we find out what works for them. And, and then you base on that, you develop more on that. For example, like I say, uh, from, from, from my perspective, right? Uh, when, when startup do things that very, very disruptive, then there are certain things that they're not sure if they can do or not. If they want to try, uh, how can they do it? For example, if you can solve problem for that group, then just suddenly you're gonna see a lot of startup like that here in Da Nang. Then there will be more housing. There will be like uh, more like some, uh, supporting service for digital nomad, uh, like you say. And then there will be more people to move here, and then people will spread the world. So every time you solve a, a, a problem for a group, uh, it grows faster, and then you based on that you adjust the the program. So I'm just saying that whatever you are doing here is great. I think it creates the conversations, like we say, and we have a lot of people here. Uh, I saw the, 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 the home room um, before the session. And I, I think that's very one uh, very effective tool. And I think we should do more of this. We, we don't just have to wait for, for another year to have conference. We, we need to have more continuous uh, conversations. Yeah, do a Facebook page, uh, messengers. By the way, the um, uh, chatbot is very great. I, I use it a lot now. So yeah, I think you are doing a lot of things right, but just uh, keep the momentum going. Um, there's going to be a lot of challenge, but just don't give up. Uh, we are happy to help. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for your help. So you mentioned about digital nomads. So do you have any idea how we can attract digital nomads 
right now they some ways in Phuket, somewhere in Bangkok, uh, in Indonesia. So how to collect them, attract them to Dana? So do you have any idea how to how to attract digital nomads yeah. to Dana? Yeah. Um, I think you 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 you've already started doing what's needed. Uh, you're building up the, the infrastructure to make it more accessible. You've now got uh, the new airport, you're going to have a new terminal, you've got more direct flights coming in. Uh, the awareness uh, of Da Nang is growing. Um, I think, I don't know if the digital infrastructure is there yet in terms of um, the, the Wi-Fi and the, the 3G networks and the, the ease and the connectivity that people can easily get connected. Um, I think it's 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 a matter of time. Uh, maybe just adding to what Chin Lim said is, if there are a couple of successes, I think it will get it on on the map. Um, but you're not going to. I don't think you'll be able to compete with, uh, say, Phuket straight away. It will take time. It will take time to build. But you've got the right passion, the right uh, the, in, the the infrastructure is building. Um, and I think it's a matter of time before it becomes a lot more uh, a popular place to, to, to want to come. I don't think you should rush it. I think it should be developed organically. The more, you know, if you rush it, then it becomes a Phuket. And that's really not a good thing, <laughs> you know. So we have to wait. It's long time and too long. Cannot wait. Uh, well, there, there's still a lot of things need to be done, uh, yeah. Lambo. Don't, don't rush Your it. Inf yeah, yeah, infrastructure, you know, different services, products. I mean, all right. I, uh, okay, I hate saying things like this, but I mean, look at Silicon Valley. It takes them 100 years to be who they are today, right? You, you cannot accelerate that within 24 months, right? And, and I think that one of the beauties of Da Nang is that, you know, things have been developed organically, right? Um, where, where, you know, things... Uh, infrastructure, in, infrastructure were developed, you know, before the business came, and, and I thought that was fantastic. The first time I came to Da Nang, unfortunately, it was kind of late in my stay here. It was about five years ago, and I was like, you know, amazed, right? I heard a lot, and but but to be seeing it is just, you know, totally amazed. And and um, yeah, and and again, I, I want to bring on Ricky when he said that he's developing, you know, his. Uh, project in Da Nang, and I was like, wow, this is, that's fantastic. That was about maybe four years ago or something that we talked a little bit about that. And then, yeah, so all these little things are coming in. You need education, you need, you know, small groups like yourself, you know, and, and slowly you get so-called the digital nomad, bring the fellow digital nomad. And that's where you build the community. And, and this community can be sustained. You don't want to have people come in, just, you know, enjoy the beach, you know, and then destroy it in the process and then leave. You know, and which is pretty much like what Phuket is, yeah. yeah. So we have all of you are grow hacking business men, and then ask me to just stay relaxed and wait. No, oh, okay. So we ask you to respect the organic growth of it and not to ruin it. At the same time, because uh, we know where is it coming from organically, and then we can decide which one we will grow in organically that without ruining the whole ecosystem. That's all we are asking. I, I, at least I'm asking. I think so. It's growing the roots, right? Yeah, yeah. But but I mean, you can still you can still uh, make it grow faster than you than you want, uh, and still keeping it intact. That's all I'm saying. And that's there's a lot of way. Facebook, right? digital marketing, uh, Google referral. Uh, that that's a lot of program that you can do. But first, you have to make sure that you understand them correctly. Yeah. More grab promo codes. Yeah. Yeah, and, you yeah, should. That would be the easy part. But then, uh, you see, uh, there's a lot of rap cars here, which may cause problems. So you don't think that we, you can help us to build like IT solution to make it more easy to uh, attract digital nomads to Danang, Matt? Uh, yeah, I think we can. But uh, I, I think there's a, a common theme here is that you, you can't, you don't want to rush it and ruin it. You need to let it, maybe you need to see uh, and pick the areas where you want to focus on. Uh, understand which problems need solving first and understand them properly to be able to uh, create opportunities in the future rather than uh, ruining it like Phuket is ruined. It's not very natural anymore. It's very built up. The, the traffic is a nightmare. I think the Thai government has uh, has slated Phuket to be 
um, uh, not regenerated, but to be more of a smart city when it comes to tourism. Um, because you, you want to be able to interlink all the different processes when it comes to tourism, to domestic tourism, international tourism, from the airport to the, uh, to the train, to the, to the uh, ground transport, to the hotels. It can be made more simple, but it, it can't be rushed. Yeah. Uh, Jim Ling, I, we know that you have some other governments uh, in terms of smart city. So how do you think about Janang can be smart city? Okay, so there are many definitions of smart cities, but I think the outcome of a smart city uh, needs to be considered in three ways. The first one is it creates jobs. Uh, the second piece about a smart city is that it improves the quality of life of the people, the citizens around it. And third is you don't want to lose your identity as the city it becomes smarter. So this also lends itself very much to the startup environment because if you think about it, if startups can actually solve this problem, they're already helping it make uh, the nun smarter. Um, so I think this is uh, critical to understand the outcome of what smart city is. And to understand also why people want to come to Da Nang, um, it's not solvable by one community. It's actually an effort from not only the startup community, the government, the commercial enterprises, the policies, and the rest of it. So there are many fundamentals which Da Nang already has and lets it uh, provides the foundation for all this to be built upon. I think um, there are breadcrumbs that uh, those who are able to provide or at least control the environment provide that breadcrumbs, whether it is by policy or by taxes or is about education and putting the right um, skilled people in place will help. Um, and then I was just throwing off an idea would be, for example, if you see the Nang because it's in the middle, it's actually excellent for a digital infrastructure if you're talking about digital nomad. So it's the latency between north and south is you know, right in the middle in the Nang. So do you want to attract Amazon to be here to provide for the country, or Amazon equivalent, or Microsoft Azure, for example, as the foundation for digital data. Once you have digital data, a sandbox, you can try and build all kinds of application on top. And that's where if you have that smart city issues that you want to problem solve and giving the inspiration for startups to actually use that data to do something. Um, and then make that difference. Um, one of the things that translates easily with data is actually how do you provide better service for tourism? How do you use that data to identify and work out a better transport system, accessibility, and so on? And so all these things then allows itself to um, provide the hooks for applications to be built. And I, I think startup here, we are talking predominantly Mostly we're thinking about IT, and it doesn't have to be. There may be other things in the manufacturing space uh, that will allow for uh, such innovation to take place here. So I would say that um, if you're looking digital, it should affect every aspect of the industry. So you know, we will need some more training, some more talent, some more people working on Yeah, I, I think it needs to start at the university, at the technical um, institutions and even private companies that can provide uh, advanced skills so that these skills are relevant uh, 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 in what the community and commercial um, enterprises need. I mean, um, okay, I think around about 10 years ago, Da Nang started this fireworks festival, yeah. which I heard wasn't really well attended, but today is in, it's a global event, right? People plan six months ahead to come. I have actually friends who came, uh, I think, maybe two weeks ago. And, and, and yeah. So, and I see Da Nang in a way kind of similar to maybe like uh, Austin, where you can create events, nurture it, and then develop it, right? Uh, one, one of the things, if you're talking about digital no, nomads, uh, one of the things that you, you, know, you can create would be, you know, a music festival, where I think it's small enough, but yet it's, it, unique enough where you can attract, you know, I don't know, alternative music, you know, mainstream music, whatever, experimental music, and using such events to, to bring in the young people. 
And, and this is where you actually, you know, cre uh, sort of plant the seed of creativity. You know, things like, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, writing competition. And I, th I think this is a great place to have a hub, you know, for that kind of creativity. I mean, if you talk about innovation, it's not just about digital, it's lifestyle, right? You've got to make that into the lifestyle. And I think Da Nang is still good enough, not so big and so crazy that you cannot develop, you know, certain lifestyle. And lifestyle is going to attract people to come to Da Nang. Yeah, uh, actually to Da Nang City, we also want to be uh, an event city. We call it Da Nang Fantastic City which is we try to organize as much as event like Grab Crazy would give a lot of code like firework and the new, the, all the code is uh, related to the event. So Dungan, do you think that a little bit confused for everybody because then they want to be a smart city, want to be an uh, event city, want to be an uh, innovation hub by the sea? Do you think it's confusing our guests uh, when no, we're selling? No, not really. I, okay. I, I don't think they, they conflict each other. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it's also like growth hacking, right? You are looking for one aspect and see if you if you do well with that group, and if you do well, I mean, we do it again and again, like the firework festival, do it better, and if we become a brand name of that, it's great. Like people can talk about us that way, and if they come here already and they like it here, they can choose to stay and do whatever they want, and then you will see the next group, digital nomad, uh, and so on. So yeah, I think it may work. Thank I think you. it's possible. Yeah. I'm open to make for a guest. Uh, uh, we, you want to uh, ask a question to our panelists? Any one of you? Yeah. Please help introduce yourself. Hi. Uh, I'm just a um, young, just graduated student from uh, Da Nang University. So I have a question. So you talk, uh, you talk a lot about uh, of thing about how to attract uh, the digital nomad and also uh, other tourists to come to Da Nang City. So in your opinions, what do you think is the unique selling point that make people want to come to Da Nang at present time? Thank you. That question can be the final question because I also going to ask those guys about Danang USB. Yeah, we are waiting for that answer later. Do you have any more questions? Yes, that's good. So, gentlemen, can you give me a brainstorm session about Danang unique selling point? What should be the best? If you are the seller, you want to sell Dalang as a digital innovation hub. So what do you sell? Um, okay, so for, I think the location has got to be up there as, uh, as one of the points. Um, you're in the middle of the country, you're by the beach. <clears throat> I'd also say that the infrastructure that I've seen is uh, a lot more efficiently managed than, 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 than other parts of Vietnam. So you have the uh, e it's easier to get around. Uh, it's a relatively small city compared to Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi, a million people. Uh, I would say that the, the young generation is also a selling point. Uh, so they would be my top three: location, the infrastructure, and the and the young younger population. So give us a word only for Da Nang. We put in Da Nang tagline. So what is that? What did you choose? I'm not a marketing person. <laughs> uh, I would say um, uh, Da Nang. Uh, <laughs> uh, you've really put me on the spot. I would say that um, I don't know. Okay, Da Nang. I don't know. I'll That's come, good. I will answer. I will answer you by the time you. Okay, yeah. Come, Bobby, I'll right? come back to you later. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Jin Lim, what do you think about our unique selling point? Um, uh, I think what he said makes all the senses, and I agree. But uh, to, to make it slightly different is to say that uh, Da Nang people, the citizens of Da Nang, to make Da Nang that even other Vietnamese talk about. Right, so you inspire the rest of the country. I think that's what's important. So I think people, the quality of people is key. Uh, if there's a phrase I can think of, I had that 30 seconds hit behind mm -hmm. you, so I could think of something. I would say in Da Nang, perhaps one of the things is that 
thing work, things work in Da Nang, right? So if people come to Da Nang, they know that if they set up a business uh, from a legal aspect, it will work. From the infrastructure aspect, it will work. The people will work. So basically, when people come to Da Nang, they are reassured that things will work. Yeah, thank you. We are proud that we are not uh, something called NATO, non-action talk only, you know that. Thank you. Thank you. So the works the, you choose is people on uh, thing works in Da Nang. Both? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And don't have three have it. I would say that we should use, um, in my opinion, uh, I think we, we, can, we can sell the, the, this kind of slogan. Uh, it's more about give you the peace of mind. I think the key word is peace of mind. Peace of mind. Yeah, okay. so when you come here, I, I mean, it's relaxed, right? It's on the beach, great food. It's taken care of. You don't have to worry about food because there's a lot of food here. You don't have to worry about where to stay because there's a lot of great place to stay. The, the atmosphere is good. Uh, and uh, the air is, is okay. Uh, I think near the beach is much better. Uh, in the city, it's quite polluted. But basically, it gives you peace of mind. And if you can take care of other aspects, for example, like internet connection, make sure that it's the top-notch one. Uh, if you can make sure that there's someone to help them with all kind of paperwork that like we talked about, so it can give them the peace of mind. So they can just relax and focus on their, their work. Yeah, okay. that would be great. Peace of mind. Sounds great. And how about you, Bobby? Okay, previously I was in the golf business. So you've got this proliferation of golf courses, which actually made me come here almost on a monthly basis. And I loved it. And then some friends came and they said, wow, this is a great stretch of road from Da Nang to Hoi An. You know, it's a great place for marathon. And bam, you have marathon and then you have triathlon, right? Uh, from, from Hoi An and then now in Da Nang. And then you have the you know, fireworks festival. And I just hopefully somebody here will start doing music festival. And, and you know, plus, you know, this already uh, built in um, development of, you know, the uh, digital um, uh, age, right? Um, so you have all these different elements, start building them, you know, sporting, uh, cr creativity, right, uh, work. Um, so for me, I think if I look at Da Nang, if there's one phrase I want to use, it will be lifestyle personified. Lifestyle? Lifestyle personified. So you basically can sort of identify and, and, and adopt, you know, a certain lifestyle that you recognize. Oh, okay. That's great. So you all me. Okay. So I've had a couple of minutes to think about it. I would say... Da Nang, be connected, be inspired. Be connected, be inspired. Finally, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm sorry, but we uh, don't have time to talk, discuss more. But it's all the uh, ideas amazing for Da Nang. And so, two of you believe or not, if we say Da Nang can be innovation hub by the sea, the answer is yes or no. Yes, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, big hand to, big hand to our panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, and we will have 10 minutes uh, break. Please uh, have yourself. We have tea, coffee and out there. And please come back in, what time is that? In 10 minutes? Yeah, 11.20, please uh, come back. We will have two more uh, contents for uh, tomorrow morning session here.